Here's Lee Strobel to give four unconvincing proofs of the resurrection of Jesus. I like to look at the evidence for the resurrection in four categories. The first one is, did Jesus die on the cross? Was he dead? Virtually every scholar on planet Earth concedes that Jesus was dead after crucifixion. We have no record of anyone anywhere ever surviving a full Roman crucifixion. Gee, it's almost as if this proof is entirely superfluous. What's the point of giving a proof that crucifixion is lethal when nobody disputes that? I think Lee is just throwing this in to pad the number of proofs he can say he has. Uh, even the Journal of the American Medical Association uh, published a peer-reviewed scientific medical study of the evidence for the death of Jesus and said clearly the weight of the evidence indicates that Jesus was dead even before the wound to his side was inflicted. Assuming the description of his crucifixion was accurate, that's a big caveat. Even the atheist New Testament scholar, Gerd Ludemann, says historically it's indisputable that Jesus was dead. So Jesus was dead. The second category of evidence is the early accounts we have for the resurrection. In other words, I used to think as an atheist that the resurrection was a legend and that took a long time to develop in the ancient world. But what I learned is that we have preserved for us a creed of the earliest Christian church, a creed that is a eyewitness-based report of the resurrection of Jesus. Now this creed has been dated back by scholars to within months of the death of Jesus. I'm curious as to how exactly you date a creed to within months of the crucifixion, when the earliest written accounts of Jesus are the letters Paul wrote about 20 years later. I suspect the creed Lee has in mind is the one in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 3, which says that Jesus died, then appeared to this person and that person. Paul, however, lists himself as the last person to whom Jesus appeared, so he wasn't a first-hand eyewitness to the earlier appearances. Paul's description of the earliest appearances are hearsay. Paul never knew Jesus before the crucifixion, so his own encounter is more probably explained by a case of mistaken identity or even some form of delusion. Within months, that is historical gold. So we've got a news flash from ancient history on the resurrection. Third category of evidence is the empty tomb. And the best evidence for that is even the opponents of Jesus implicitly admitted the tomb was empty. Because when the disciples began proclaiming that Jesus had risen, what the opponents said was, oh, well, um, the disciples stole the body. Not all of the opponents said that. I actually don't believe there was an empty tomb. Finding a tomb empty implies that it was at one time full. I doubt Jesus was ever even buried because he was crucified and the whole point of a crucifixion was to humiliate a person. It was to put their carcass on display. The Bible says that some random dude named Joseph of Arimathea, a place that's totally made up, took Jesus's body and gave it a dignified burial. But why would the Romans permit that given that it defeats the whole purpose of a crucifixion. Now they're conceding the tomb's empty, they're just trying to explain how it got empty. So everybody's conceding the tomb was empty. How did it get empty is really the issue. And the accounts of the folks who supposedly found it empty are not only inconsistent with each other, one of them is internally inconsistent. Matthew 28.8 says that the ladies who found the empty tomb hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Yet Mark 16.8 says that they went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Not only do these two passages contradict one another, the one that says the women said nothing to anyone is self-contradictory because if they said nothing nothing to anyone, then how did the author of Mark find out about it? And that goes to the fourth category of evidence, which is eyewitnesses. You know, for most of what we know about ancient history, it comes from one or maybe two sources of information. And yet, for the conviction of the disciples that they encountered the resurrected Jesus, we have no fewer than nine ancient sources, inside and outside the New Testament confirming and corroborating the, the conviction of the disciples that they encountered the risen Christ. Of which only Paul's is firsthand, and most probably mistaken or delusional. The rest are hearsay. They are not independent eyewitness accounts. That is an avalanche of historical data. No, it isn't. An avalanche of historical data would be testimonies from each or even a handful of the people Paul claims had seen Jesus after the crucifixion. Instead of several eyewitness accounts, we have Paul's one sketchy Road to Damascus account, his list of other people he claims have seen Jesus, and other secondhand, at best, accounts of alleged appearances.
everyone who helps me out on Patreon. You're a big help. Thanks so much.